It is Thursday, December 7th, 2017, and it is just about 9 p.m. Eastern Time, which means that the AWRL Digital Bulletin is about to come on the air, and I thought we would uh, go through receiving of a radio teletype signal off the air on the Teletype Model 28 KSR, because hopefully some of you will find that uh, interesting. We're going to be using the Drake 2B receiver here uh, as our receiver. We're on the 80 meter band, as you can see from the band switch uh, over here. And we are right about where we expect the signal to come on the air. In fact, I see the, uh, the S meter bouncing. It may have just come on the air at about 3.5975 megahertz. The 2B has been on for um, probably about 10 minutes now, so it should be warmed up enough to hold the signal. It is a tube type receiver and it does drift a little bit when it first comes on. Once it has been warmed up, it's, it's pretty stable, at least down here where my temperature doesn't change very much. Um, so hopefully we will be able to get the signal tuned in pretty rapidly and then um, uh, be able to hold it uh, long enough to decode it. Now I've been trying this this week off and on uh, as the signals come through and some days have been better than others. Yesterday was not very good because there was some thunder in the area and the static crashes were interrupting uh, reception but hopefully we'll find that today is a little bit better. Or, I'm sorry, some lightning in the area. Um, we will be using the HAL ST5000 uh, as a terminal unit. This is an anachronism for this station. It's rather newer than the other equipment in the station, but it's the terminal unit that I have working right now. I do not currently have a working tube type uh, terminal unit, which would have been appropriate for this 1960s station. Uh, and then we will be decoding on the Model 28 KSR. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and plug the speaker in here on the Drake 2B. Um, and uh, although the, it looks like the signal, if you see the S unit or the S meter here, is, has fallen down, it looks like maybe the signal is uh, maybe wasn't the AWRL bulletin because it should have still been on. But we'll I'll plug the speaker in. We will try to find the signal that's going on, uh, or that that when it comes on, if it's not on now. Um, get it tuned in. I'll show you both the 2B and the HAL ST5000 while I do that and then we'll um, uh, we'll look at some decode on the uh, Model 28. So bear with me. Uh, I'll be back in just a moment when I uh, get the speaker hooked back up and we'll try to tune in a signal. So here is the ready signal we're going to try to decode. These tones are too low in frequency um, for the decoder. Um, so I'll turn on the decoder and then we'll try to tune those in. I'll show you a view of the decoder while we'll do that. You'll hear it rise in frequency. We'll peak the meter on the ST5000 and then we will um, uh, hopefully look at some copy. Okay, so here's the ST5000. Um, it is set up to automatically, automatically begin decoding when it receives a strong enough signal. You'll see that it doesn't have virtually any signal showing over here on the meter and that's because our frequency is off. But if I tune this in, we should see that meter rise. And peak at some point. The bouncing up and down is when I am achieving a tune on one of either mark or space, but not the other, uh, which causes it to believe that the signal is coming in and out. There we go. Okay, there you see we're getting gibberish, which means I've tuned in on the wrong sideband. I just changed the sideband, and here we go, we're getting good copy. So that's how hard it is to tune in uh, the RIDI signal on the vintage equipment. It's really not a big deal. Um, there is a graphical display that one can use. You can hook an oscilloscope to the tuner, which would have made it faster. You saw I, I was tuning in repeatedly on only one of the two tones, uh, which is why we weren't getting a copy and the teletype did not come on. Uh, but once I had the, uh, I rose the frequency just a little bit higher, uh, the audio frequency just a little bit higher, it locked in and started decoding. 
So now I'm going to open the cover uh, and move the camera back just a little bit so that you can see the decode in action. As we've seen previously, this makes the teletype somewhat louder. So let's look at some of the parts of the teletype as it decodes. Obviously this here is the ribbon coming across from one side to the other. And the ribbon passes through the type box right here, which is this thing that's jumping up and down. Here's the hammer. The type box moves so that a particular letter is underneath the hammer, and then the hammer strikes that letter on the type box. These wheels down here, control the uh, movement across the page as the teletype prints. And you can see possibly uh, in here, it may be too dark, there's one tooth for each character across the page. Interestingly, inside one of these wheels, and it is this one, uh, there is a large coil spring that winds up as the um, type box moves across the page. And the carriage return to the left is affected by simply releasing that wheel, allowing the coil spring to move the head back to the left as quickly as the stored energy will allow. In order to keep it from smashing into the left side, there's a little uh, air dash pot down here that slows it down when it hits that side that's controlled off this wheel on the right hand side. As you can see, the copy is excellent. Let me uh, close the cover um, and move so that's a little bit quieter and move you in closer so that you can see the copy uh, in action. Uh, it's just as solid as you would see on a modern digital signal processing system. As you can see, when the signal is strong, um, it just copies solid. No errors, no trouble, no, no gap in the signal. Now, if we did have some noise or an interfering station or something like that, um, this setup is not going to be as robust to that as a modern digital decoder will. For one thing, the narrowest um, passband that I can get around this RIDI signal is about 500 hertz wide on the Drake 2B, and it has rather shallow um, skirts, which means the interfering signals that are nearby within, say, a couple of kilohertz of the signal will cause the AGC uh, to go in and out of action. See here, we had a, a, a decoding error there, someone keyed up um, nearby will cause the AGC to go in and out, um, which will uh, pump the signal and, and can cause uh, decoding errors. Also, signals that are too close, of course, will, will cover up the tones. And this teletype machine is not capable of doing any sort of error correction like a digital machine might be able to do and recover some of that signal. If signal is lost, signal is, is simply lost. However, as you can see, um, you know, it's very reliable and it, and it gets good copy. So as I, can, as I said before, if you wanted to see this entire bulletin, you could see the entire bulletin uh, by downloading it online. We won't go through the whole thing. I'm going to give you one wider shot so you can see the margin light uh, and things like that, and then we'll shut it down. There was an interfering signal that, uh, that prevented decode for the end of that last line. They're a little bit better about their carriage returns. We're not seeing the margin light come on. It comes on at, I think, 66 or 68 columns. Uh, and that's this lamp right here. There it went. All right, um, I'm gonna go ahead and, and shut this off. I'll probably let the rest of this uh, decode just for my own uh, edification and enjoyment. But um, thanks for watching. I hope you found this uh, interesting. Uh, and if you, if you do and you haven't seen my other teletype videos, you can see more of how they work internally and more of how this particular machine works uh, internally in the teletype playlist on my channel. If you enjoyed this, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, consider subscribing to the channel and we'll have more content like 
content like this uh, in the future. Thanks for watching.